former special advisor, uh, assistant to Governor Nyesimwike of River State, Barrister Orae St. Franklin, has said the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, is the hope for Nigeria's restoration. Orae said Obi is the best among candidates of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Bola Tinubu, and Atiku Abubakar, respectively. Now, he asserted that Nigerians are disturbed about the current situation in the country, which has been bewildered with security challenges and a poor economy, but that the former governor of Anambra state has the credentials to solve them. Well, joining us to discuss this is Orae St. Franklin, former senior special assistant to Governor Yusin Wiki of River State. Thank you so much, Orae, for joining us. Glad to be here, Marianne. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, let's start by... I, I'm curious. How did you move from the PDP to, <laughs> to the Labour Party? I, I, I mean, I've, I've seen that you've listed a couple of things do you think that, you know, would help your candidate win. But what endeared you to a Peter B as opposed to the PDP? Fantastic. Um, Marianne, um, if you look at the landscape with the current um, political um, um, trend, you would see that um, there's something that's playing out with among Nigerians, it's um, a hybrid kind of politics. You know, you have people who are involved in um, supporting Mr. Peter Obi, who are not necessarily members of uh, the Labour Party. You know, um, so it, for a state like River State, where I come from, while indeed I support the uh, governorship candidate of the PDP, you have me throwing my weight behind um, Mr. Peter Obi, and you see these kind of things playing out across our country. It's, it's called the hybrid politics. So why do we do this? We are doing this because, um, like I, I've said in various fora, Mr. Peter Obi inspires the most confidence among Nigerians of having the capacity to address the biting issues that are confronting us today, issues of insecurity, issues of the economy, right? Issues of job creation for young people. Mr. Peter Obi has the most, the best, um, the best, um, he inspires the best confidence in among Nigerians. This is why we are throwing our support behind Mr. Peter Obi. So it's not necessarily about being members of uh, the Labour Party, but uh, it's a hybrid kind of politics. Now, you know of the um, recent uh, position of the Anambra State Governor and former Central Bank Governor, um, uh, you know, his position on Peter B. He's saying that uh, he made a lot of, you know, insinuations that he's not necessarily who we think he is. Now, I'm also going to po put, pose a question to you. Why do you think that Peter B. has the solution? Because, you know, I just finished talking to members of the PDP and the APC and they're going back and forth with each other as to who did what and who didn't. Um, but we know how be bedeviled we are on every side, whether it be in the, on the economy, um, you know, insecurity. There's a lot to be done. And Peter B. is one guy. Don't forget, you still have the APC and the PDP who are the majority at, at the National Assembly and the legislature knowing also that this could also become a frustration of sorts if your man were to win, can he stand alone and do the job? Because that's the question that is on the average critic's mind. It's very easy to deal with that. And I'll tell you why. It's because um, fundamentally, um, democracy, it's about government being of the people, by the people, and for the people. So um, there's no political party but which by itself would um, command um, um, huge followership, you know, would command the respect of Nigerians and um, 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 let, me, let, let, let me explain, let me, let me take this in a different light. Um, there's nothing to really bother, there's nothing to bother about, um, with, there's nothing to bother about Mr. Peter be commanding the, the, the respect the influence, the followership of Nigerians. Because um, fundamentally, when he wins, he would have the mandate of our people. And if Mr. Peter B has the mandate of our people, it means that in the National Assembly, um, um, the, the members of the National Assembly would also um, um, respect the wishes of Nigerians. So it's not about Mr. Peter Obi going on this alone. It's about Nigerians who are backing Mr. Peter Obi. It's about Nigerians who are giving voice and giving life 
you know, to the campaign across the country. So it's, it's, it's not just about one man. It's about Nigerians who are backing him. You know, the fears and con concerns being expressed in certain quarters that when Mr. Peter Obi wins, he would likely be impeached in the National, in the national uh, Assembly because he would be one man in Labour Party and you have a National Assembly that would be majorly composed of people from the um, APC or PDP. For me, I do not think um, there's, much to, there's much to fear about, there's much to be concerned about that because fundamentally, fundamentally, you have Nigerians backing Mr. Peter Obi and the National Assembly itself cannot be oblivious of that fact. Okay. Um, a lot of people would also query how Peter Obi has been made to seem like a holy cow, and I'm using the word cow loosely here, um, as opposed to every other person. Now, let's not forget that he came from these same political parties that we seem to be pointing fingers at. He came not just from the PDP, he came from APCA to the People's Democratic Party, and then now he's moved to Labour Party. Um, he has been part of this PDP government that many have said for 16 years had put Nigeria in a rot. Okay, and now, of course, he's now with the Labour Party. So can we really totally just separate him from a party? Uh, uh, I mean, many people would say, let's talk about him as a governor. But then there's a saludo on the other side saying, well, all of those things you said he did, um, monies that he invested for Anambra State, I don't see it. Uh, those things are just window dressing. So again, why should the average Nigerian throw their weight behind the Pitalbi what is the assurance that he can bring Nigeria out? Let's not forget, in 2015, it seemed like a watershed moment, and everybody thought that there was a savior that was coming to save us. But here we are, almost eight years down the line. We're singing almost the same song, anybody but. So why should we again throw our weight behind your candidate? Fantastic. Um, currently, Nigerians are throwing their weight behind Mr. Peter Obi because they believe that he's the most qualified. They believe that he has the best character. They believe that he has the best message. They believe that he has the best, um, like I said from the beginning, he, he inspires the best confidence amongst the three leading candidates of having the capacity to address the teaching problems bedeviling our country. Now, um, if you look at um, Mr. Peter Obi and look at Anambra State, you've brought in the issue of uh, the current governor of Anambra State. Um, the last time I spoke about this, I said Mr. Um, Chukuma Soludo, the governor of Anambra State, has a right to hold his opinion. But what we cannot take away from um, the issue is that indeed Mr. Peter Obi invested in Anambra State, made investments in Anambra State, which brought returns. No government has come, not even Mr. Chukuma Soludo has come to say he did not make those investments. In this country, it's very difficult to find public officials who are not um, identified with corruption. Mr. Chukma Solubdo has not said Mr. Peter Obi is uh, identified with corruption. And that's a big issue any day, any time. You know, so um, these are the sort of reasons that inspire Nigerians to back Mr. Peter Obi. Across our country, you find our people standing behind him because he inspires the most confidence. So um, whether um, this will lead to Victory uh, at the elections is a different um, conversation. But Talk, talking about talking about the victory, let's talk about the winning because okay. I'm, I'm, I have a very little time. Um, how does he intend to win? Because again, he seems to have some form of following, whether on social media, on ground in the south east and the south south. But when you begin to go up to the middle belt and the north, the politics begins there. How does he intend to, you know, open the doors that are shut in front of him already? Um, and because this is where the votes are, the North carries most of the votes, whether we like it or not. There is some percentage, and you need to steal from that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, looking at the landscape, the political landscape of Nigeria, Mr. Peter Obi has his comfort zones. The South is South South. He's going to battle the um, Southwest with the candidate of the All Progressive uh, Congress. You know, in the North, I can tell you that we're making inroads because across the country, we have people who are organizing. Every day, people are on the ground building a mass of followers, you know, supporting Mr. Peter Obi. At the call north, there are um, places in um, Zamfara, in Sokoto, where there's no semblance of government. When I say no semblance of government, even um, local government, because those areas have been taken over by militias. 
but we still find a way to get into those nooks and crannies, you know, because of the wide appeal that Mr. Peter Obi has. So if we can be having this kind of access, you know, in the core north, why should we be afraid about winning the elections? Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, Arai. I wish I had more time so we could go into, you know, the percentages and the figures. But I will have you back here soon as the campaign season continues to unfold itself and we'll talk more about your candidates. Arai said, frankly, is the former senior special assistant to Governor Yusun Wike of River State. A pleasure. Same here. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. Well, that's the show tonight. And we are always reminding you that you need to go and pick up your PVC because that is your passport to the Nigeria that you desire. But if you missed any bit of our shows, please go to Plus TV Africa or Plus TV Africa Lifestyle and watch all of our shows. And don't forget to subscribe. We leave you with the highlights of the week this week. My name is Mary Anna Cohn. Have a beautiful evening. But in 2014, the thinking of this leadership was that Nigeria economic or Nigeria state was not terrible or was not bad. But the moment we took over mantle of leadership, we discovered that the problem was more serious than we thought. And which means Nigerian structure was a very terrible one, which requires holistic restructuring, holistic approach to various challenges that will be deviling our nation. I won't equally forget that between 2016 and 2021, the entire world faced a lot of economic challenges. That period, the price of oil uh, was at the lowest ebb. Due for COVID-19, that ravaged the whole world in 2019 and 2022, as well as a global economic recession, which was actually having a parity effect on our um, Nigerian states. And these are the challenges Buhari has decision inherited. And we should give that government credit for being able to ensure that Nigeria remains a nation to be reckoned with. This government has been able to put in place, compared what PDP government put in place in the last 15 years, Nigerians should give kudos to this government okay. for performing wonders. That's why the challenges economically security-wise, and politically, that the government had witnessed, the government was able to ensure that the lives of Nigerians are taught. As far as I'm concerned, it is not, it is, it is not in the constitution that says we should not, 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 we should not we should, the federal character is the constitution. Are we following it? No. The, the local government autonomy and the judicial autonomy is the constitution. Are we following it? No. There is a law in the constitution that says finances belong to the executive uh, judiciary to be paid directly to them. Then we are not, that is not happening. It is not the question that says people should be appointed from one particular set of the country. It is not the question that says you must be unfair to certain category of people or you must treat certain people fairly and unfairly. It is not, it's not in there in the constitution. So, if, as far as I'm concerned, if we were even implement the constitution the way it is today, 40% of the position of the population that constitution, Nigeria will be at the right. So, as far as I'm concerned, our problem is not the constitution. Our problem is those who implement and enforce the constitution to suit their own personal interests. This problem, this conspiracy of subjecting the, the Nigerians into hardship didn't start today. In, 19, in 1973, Gowan increased home price from 6 Kobo to 8 Kobo 45. Gowan, when Moritala came, Moritala increased it to 9 Kobo. And when OBJ first time came, he increased it to 15 Kobo. And of course, when Shagari came, he jumped start to 20 Kobo. And then when IBB jumped in, it increased to 70 Kobo. OBJ second coming, jumped it from 70 Kobo to 75 Naira. Look at the gap. 
the only person that has the interest of Nigerians up to today that I look up and I say that's the only person I can call my president is President Yadua, who came in and reduced the pump price from 75 to 65 naira. But when Jonathan came, the spree continued. What is it that the ordinary Nigerian can benefit in this country? This is what God has given to us. Why can't we benefit from it? Why is it that we keep on saying the same thing, blaming games? Is there no way we can have what I call strategic thinking process? Is there no way we can have a planned process whereby we can think about it uh, today, we can think about tomorrow? 